Welcome to Behind the Lines, coming to you from the socialist Marxist lines of Washington State. It's a crazy liberal petri dish for the rest of the country, folks. Stay up to date with all the great news right here. So by now we've all seen this video of Makia Bryant being shot by these officers in Toledo, Ohio because she tried to stab another black girl and uh, of course the media is trying to run with this narrative that uh, it was uh, over the top, the cops shouldn't have shot her, or something else should have been done. You see people coming out and saying it was just a teenager, let her be a teenager. I don't know, I've got teenagers and uh, as far as I know none of them have ever tried to stab anybody. It's, I don't think it's a, a teenager thing. And uh, you've got all these, you know, talking heads trying to say that uh, something else should have been done. She's just a girl. I mean, what about the black girl who was almost stabbed? Does anybody care about her? Does BLM care about her? The fact that that officer saved her life? Uh, NBC even, you know, edited the uh, footage so that it didn't show the knife. Uh, I, I don't know what the end game is with the media other than that they're trying to provoke anger and racism and it's sick and it should be illegal for the media to edit videos like that and leave the uh, most important facts of a case out of it. We cannot let our justice system and law enforcement system become uh, a system of emotion and social justice. Laws are laws. They're black and white. Uh, there needs to be logic used and not emotion. And uh, Derek Chauvin was found guilty this week. And uh, I definitely think he is guilty of manslaughter. I'm not sure about the murder charges. Uh, I mean, the guy, the guy needs to be locked up for what happened, but I think that these cases were not tried properly, and you've got a juror coming out now saying that she was worried about rioting and destruction and people coming to her house, and you can't tell me that every juror wasn't worried about that. Uh, it's just in, in a climate like that where you've got people who are willing to commit crimes and destroy property and come to your house and do who knows what if you don't agree with them or decide with them you're not going to have any fair trials the, they're, they're just it's not going to be possible people are going to be afraid of uh whatever could happen to them if they don't agree with the mob. On top of that, as the case was wrapping up, you've got all these big politicians saying that, um, you know, inside trying to incite violence if the quote-unquote right decision isn't made. Even President Biden himself said uh, that he hoped the right decision would be made. Well, what was the right decision? I mean, that's a extremely inappropriate thing for a president to say, considering the amount of weight uh, his comments hold with people. These politicians need to keep their mouths shut and quit using all these events for their own little personal gain and the bottom line is people who commit crimes need to be charged and prosecuted if they're guilty and go to jail. And that doesn't mean, matter if it's uh, a citizen or a police officer or a politician or whoever. Nobody should be above the law. And in some cases law enforcement has gotten away with things in the past and that does need to change. but. Uh, 
influencing the court system, the legal system, the criminal justice system is already screwed up as it is. We don't need politicians and angry mobs of people influencing decisions uh, about guilt and innocence. Guilt and innocence should be determined by evidence and that's it. And the people who are on the jury should be able to decide if that evidence is enough to convict somebody and incarcerate them without fear of reprisal if uh, people don't agree with their decision. And uh, I think we're at a tipping point here with the scales of justice, if, if that's going to, uh, how this is going to play out. Now, I want to circle back to this Makia Bryant case uh, this morning, April 26. This is an article from the Epoch Times. Cousin of Makia Bryant says the family is weighing legal action after the shooting. Uh, in the article, it says, uh, the cousin told Business Insider that Bryant called the police when two women showed up at her home in Columbus and fought with her. Officials in Columbus have not confirmed whether Bryant, 16, made the 911 call. Uh, Torrance stated that her mother, Hazel Bryant, and Bryant's biological mother, Paula, so um, family issues, obviously, and she was in some kind of foster home where this occurred, and apparently it had some uh, ongoing issues there, although they don't elaborate what that is. Anyway, they're speaking with a lawyer and are seeking to take legal action, uh, but didn't elaborate on the details about what agency or official will be sued. Of course, somebody's going to be sued. Someone has to be held accountable, Torrance told Business Insider. The family just doesn't want this to be another senseless killing that goes under the rug and gets overlooked. Well, I'll tell you who's accountable is the family is accountable. That girl is accountable for her actions. And whether she called 911 or not, when the cop arrived, she should have dropped that knife and let the cop handle whatever situation was happening. The girl was not being assaulted when police arrived. Uh, she was doing the assaulting. And if she was assaulted prior to the police officer's arrival, then, you know, she called 911 for a cop to come there and take care of the situation, and that's what he was trying to do. Instead, he arrives, sees a girl with a knife about to stab another girl, he tries to get her to listen, tries to give her commands to drop the knife. She doesn't listen. He has seconds to act before she stabs this girl with this pretty large knife that she had. What, what is he supposed to do? What, what, are you, what would you do in that situation? Tackle her? Do you think she's not going to stab you just because she's a 16-year-old girl? She's a big girl. I mean... Just because it's a 16-year-old doesn't mean they're not capable of murder or stabbing an adult. You don't go tackling somebody with a knife or go hands-on with somebody with a knife. And that's not the way the police are trained. And it wouldn't have done any good to use a taser in that situation either because tasers don't work quite frequently. And if you've watched any number of police videos, you would know that a taser is just not that reliable. So he had to make a choice, and um, I'm not quite, I don't quite understand why people aren't, you know, more understanding about this particular case and the fact that he saved that other black girl from being murdered on the street, you know, whether she belonged there or not. Once the officer arrives, you need to stop what you're doing and let the officer sort the situation out and deal with the problem. Anyway, the mom goes on to say, we're talking about a kid. She's a kid. She's 16, defending herself from 20-something-year-olds. Um, again. And then she's the, the mother is 29. Uh, so here, here we have more family issues at the whole heart of this situation. 
Um, if I felt threatened, if I felt that a group of individuals coming on my property where I live to fight me, I would get whatever I needed to protect myself. Yep. Yes, that, that is perfectly fine. Um, until you've called the police and until they've arrived. And at that point, it is up to them. And like I said, in this video, the victim uh, in this, Bryant, was not being assaulted by anybody. She was the aggressor. She was doing the assaulting. Nobody has any idea what really happened before that, uh, including the mom, So, because she wasn't there. Uh, meanwhile, she claimed that the foster care system in which Bryant was using failed her. Well, at, at the heart of this matter, her mother failed her. Her family failed her. And yes, probably the foster system as it fails, many kids failed her as well. But at the end of the day, you are responsible for your own actions. People know the difference between right and wrong. She called 911, supposedly, and if she's the one that made the call, then when the cop got there, she should have talked to the cop, and she should have stopped what she was doing and let the cop handle it. Why did you call 911 if you didn't want the officer to handle that situation? Uh, and, and at least some Democrats are coming out in support of the police in this particular matter. Uh, Rep Representative Val Demings, a Democrat from Florida, a former police chief in Florida, said the officer who fatally shot Makia Bryant, 16 last week, appeared to have been responding as he was trained to deal with the chaotic situation. That is absolutely true. He responded exactly as he and every other officer in this country is trained to deal with a situation just like that. And he responded exactly how he should have. No question. There is no question in this case. There is no... You can Monday morning quarterback this thing all you want, but that is the only option he had. Uh, so, unless you've been a cop, and I was for nine years... Fugitive recovery for 16. Um, I've been in many situations where we have had to arrest people with weapons or whatever. Um, but those people complied with orders. And uh, unless you've been in any of those situations or have dealt with the chaos uh, of a situation like that, you have no idea what it's like. You can sit there and think that you know what you'd do or exactly how you'd respond or know a better way or you've watched a lot of movies about cops so you think you've got a handle on it, but you, you have no idea unless you've been in a situation like that where it's complete chaos and everything is happening very fast and you have seconds to make a decision about what you're going to do. So... It is what it is, and uh, unfortunately, people don't like to believe there's consequences for your actions anymore, but there is, and you are responsible for your own self and your own behavior. Nobody else is, and that's until people realize that, I guess the situation's not going to change. You're going to have all these people crying about, you know, what happens when they break the law. Uh, or when they hurt other people, or whatever. But people need to start being uh, responsible for themselves and not uh, expect other people to be responsible for their actions. So you've got this next big situation coming with a law enforcement shooting in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, they declared a state of emergency Monday morning ahead of the release of body camera footage that shows the shooting of a 42-year-old black male by a police officer, suggesting the move is designed to preempt protests and riots. Um, the mayor stated that law enforcement expects a period of civil unrest following the release of the video showing the fatal shooting of An Andrew Brown Jr., Brown died following the execution of a search warrant on April 21st, and witnesses have said that Brown was driving away from the scene at the time when deputies opened fire. So, 
it'll be interesting to see this. Um, it's supposed to be released to the public this week. Uh, apparently, this is just going to happen every time we have a police shooting in this country now of a black person. Um, we're going to have protests and riots, and we're going to have to have news conferences and all these things. It's just, um, it's kind of insane to me that the angry mob controls uh, how police and city officials are going to manage their cities and why this is allowed to happen. I think uh, they need to start quelling these situations quickly and put a stop to them so that uh, these things don't continue to get out of hand across the country because it's getting to that point. Every single shooting of a black person, they're out in the streets saying that it wasn't right. Um, and in most cases, um, the person, the, the victim did something to provoke the response of being shot. They've broken the law, they've committed some major crime, and or they had a weapon, and somehow this always gets overlooked, and, and nobody seems to want to address that part of it, just that the cops uh, did too much. And of course the media is all too happy to jump on these stories and make big headlines and um, make draw comparisons and you know, the Makia Bryant thing, NBC edited their video so that it did not show she had a weapon and they didn't even mention the weapon. So what is the purpose of that? You know, the media is trying to force some weird propaganda and cause division in this country between whites and blacks. And every time you hear them talk about a situation like this, it's always a white officer did this to a black person. They always have to make sure they you know, um, put plenty of stress on that race card so that they can get everybody riled up and see what kind of, you know, what kind of uh, response they can create. Why people don't see through this situation is just kind of confusing to me. I, I don't understand why uh, people don't push back on the media for forcing these narratives. Instead, they just go along with it, and uh, they're being manipulated. Um, and I don't know, they seem happy to be manipulated for whatever reason. There's no doubt that some practices in law enforcement need to be changed. I believe that they need to have ongoing training, which most do not have at this point. Uh, and, you know, uh, officers who break the law need to be uh, prosecuted and incarcerated like anybody else. There should be no uh, special treatment because they were a police officer. So, you know, I do agree that uh, changes need to be made and uh, there are new um, concerns for law enforcement when they're in the field these days uh, with mental health and everything else, all the social issues that are going on in this country, and I don't think police are properly equipped or trained to handle a lot of these situations. And so that is definitely something that needs to be uh, changed, but this doesn't mean that every time a cop shoots somebody they did something wrong or we need to riot or, you know, make it into some giant uh, social issue. We should be looking at, you know just as much at the person who was shot and why, you know, what they've done and all that uh, along with the police. So it, uh, I don't know, I don't see it getting any better anytime soon. I'm sure glad I'm not a police officer anymore because I don't think I would have lasted long as a cop, but in these, in these times and the way things are ran now, Everything is run on emotion in this country now instead of logic, and um, that's not going to get us anywhere productive. Anyway, stay tuned. I'm sure there'll be more chaos this week when this other video comes out uh, for Andrew Brown, and who knows what else will happen this week. I'm sure some cop somewhere will do something that somebody doesn't like, and it's going to make headlines because it's all about fear and anger these days with the news media because like CNN said fear sells
Hey everyone, thanks for listening to the Behind the Line podcast. I hope you will subscribe to the channel so you can get regular updates. And if you're listening to this on YouTube, I hope you will also uh, like it, share it, and uh, subscribe on YouTube as well. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Anchor, Sprecher. We're on various other podcast platforms. Um, And you can find me on LinkedIn under John Washington. Again, thank you for listening. We appreciate your support.